If you love using keyboards and Logseek, then this is the video for you because I'm going to be talking about the Vim plugin that gives a lot of more keyboard options inside your Logseek. It's a full video, so I'm going to go over all the elements that are there that I can use. And in the description, there will be a link to a quick cheat sheet I built so that you have easy reference afterwards to use this plugin to full effect. Now, let's start with a quick demo. Uh, this is something that I use the plugin for a lot. This is the marker. So I made a mark called nine that brings me to my quick switch page. And then I can use the selector to pick a page and press Ctrl Shift Enter and get towards the page all without touching my mouse. And there will be more tricks like this inside the video. Let me show you how to install it. You go to Logseek to plugins and it's pretty basic you go to marketplace search for vim and you'll find the vim editor and the vim shortcuts and then vim shortcuts is the one you want so i'm clicking on install giving it a second then go to installed and to make sure that it's enabled and at that point in time you should be able to use its features movement because vim uses hjkl you might be thinking that's weird, why is it there and not just using the arrow keys? And that's because Bill Joy did this when he was writing Vim. He was doing it on an ADM free terminal and those terminals don't have separate arrow keys. Those have the arrow keys printed exactly where you would expect HJKL. Now let me show you how that works. Of course, normally you would use the arrow keys, but in Vim, we have to go outside of edit mode. So you see the cursor now and pressing J and K won't do much for you. So you have to first press the escape button. Screen key does something weird, but I'll mention when it's a button that it doesn't show. And that shows you the visual mode. And now I can press the Y and K keys to move up and down. But it allows for more things to happen. For example, if I use shift and I pick Y, it goes to like the next element. Now that doesn't look like much here, but if I'm looking at these top elements, for example, using the shift, I can quickly go through the headings that I have. And this really saves me a lot of mousing and searching and going through it. Another thing that I like is how it uses the left and right keys. So you have the H and L, and if you press H, you go up a level. So you go to the parents basically. And if you press L, you go like to the last child element. So if you're going like, for example, to element B here, and I would like to add an element to that set, I can go L and I can go O, and I got like a new line and I can add an element to it. Then you have the G key, which moves capital G, moves all the way down in the page and capital T, which moves all the way up in the page. So you'll see shift and T because of course, that's how you write capitals. Very useful if you're on a page and you just want to scroll all the way down to the beginning to add new elements or you want to scroll all the way to the top to add page properties. Then we have the folding. So the folding works like this. I do set Z to close and Z O to open. So the Z reminder for me is like folding. If you have like a piece of paper and it's folded, then the Z happens and then O and C are pretty obvious. Now there's another element as well. I can they do um, shift C, so small Z, big C element, and that will fold all the elements. So if I do an open now, you see that not all these sub elements are there. And I can do the reverse with Z and an capital O that will open all the sub elements. So this is very useful if you just want to close like one layer or two layers or you don't want to fold everything in and out. An element used very much with longer documents where I want to be able to hide things away so I can still have my overview and keep working. Now, one of my favorite keys in this set, I have a lot of favorite keys, but this one I use very much is the Control Shift Enter. And what that will do is it will take the first link in a line and follow that. And that's very useful because when I go to Logseek and for example, I'm going like, hey, I would like to go into a template meeting here, for example, then I would have to go in edit mode, go towards the link and then press Control O to enter it. Just pressing Ctrl O won't work because Logseek doesn't know which element you want to click on. But using the Vim plugin, I can pick a line and then press Ctrl Shift Enter and that will immediately go towards the first link. And that saves me like a lot of mouse clicking, Ctrl O pushing. One of the main reasons why I love it. And it's part of the trick that I showed in the beginning of the video because that's what I do. I have a mark that brings me to a quick page and then I use the Ctrl Shift Enter to take one of the elements and go there, allowing me to quickly go up and down and browse through all my notes and, you know, work faster. So let's get to editing. And 
editing works in a way where you need to make changes to these lines. You can't stay in this visual moving around mode unless you don't make any new notes. And the first two elements are to start editing at the end or the beginning of the line. Now you can do it with the arrow keys in base Logseq, but I'm showing you in this plugin to be complete. And then with A for add, you add stuff to the end. And with I for insert, you add stuff at the beginning. Then you can use the O to add a line under. So with small O is under. And you can do shift O to add something above. And these two things help me a lot because very often I'm going through my notes and I want to add a new line and I don't want to go to the end of the line, press enter. Of course, like knowing that you can press like a right key and enter makes it pretty trivial, but every key stroke saved is another one. And definitely because I also have like that above one and it's surefire and it always works. These two keys I use all the time when I'm building out notes or thoughts inside Logseq. We're gonna look at the changing of the lowercase and uppercase. So say I wanna change this to uppercase, I press G and shift U to make it all uppercase, or if I wanna make it lowercase, I do the same one, G and then just U for lowercase. So uppercase, lowercase, depending on how you type the U. Organizing, so when you have your blocks, you might wanna move them around. Now, a basic one is if you use shift and the L key, because then it moves it to the right and shift H, which moves it back towards the left. Another thing that I use very often is copy and paste. So yeah, this is a very basic fin maneuver, but if you press the Y key twice, I key, like this is the moment that my English really <laughs> points out. Anyhow, when I press the I key twice, it makes a copy of that line and I can go anywhere and press P to paste it under it. But it can also press shift P if I wanna paste it above. So that makes it very easy to bring those elements back. Another key that you have is D, which is from delete, and it removes a line, but it also copies it towards the clipboard. That means that if I remove this one and I wanna move it like under here, for example, I can go there, press the P key and have it moved. And then finally you have shift I, and that copies a reference. So if I paste it here, and as you can see, it puts a reference down there and I'll scroll down a bit so you can see it even if I'm pressing keys. So that's very easy if you wanna make quick links towards certain lines inside your setup. Finally, page search. So if I go all the way up here, say I wanna find uh, B1A, I can do slash, but this only works in visual mode. And then you get like this command thing on the bottom where I say like, hey, I wanna find B1A. And as you can see, it will find the first element and highlight it. Now I have to press enter to go in search mode and then I can press N to try and find the next one or shift N to find the previous one. Of course now in this case there was only one element so let's search for something that I know I'm gonna find a lot of. This is the element one and then with N I can go through these elements and they all light up and with shift N I can go back. Right I'm gonna go wear a sweater because for some reason it's, it's cold in the studio today. It's, normally it's not that bad, but you know. So, small change. Anyhow, let's dive into the next bit and that is the advanced features like search and markings. Okay, so this feature allows you to search for things. So you can press SG to search on Google. And there's a couple of other ones that I got on the cheat sheet. Here, um, things like SH for GitHub and SE for Wikipedia. It also searches on Baidu, Stack Overflow, and YouTube, though I use those ones less often. Um, let's demo that. So I'm going here. So let's say Logseq, and I wanna search it on Google. So I'll press SG, and it opens my browser and it goes straight to Google and it shows me Logseq as expected there. Let's go back and let's try it on Wikipedia. And then it finds it on Wikipedia and I'm highly disappointed that there's no dedicated Logseq page in there right now. Let's bear with me. Well, you know, that, that was to be expected. A little rivalry in my end. I'll dive into that rabbit hole after this. So search, uh, then the other things like GitHub that I use very often because when I'm researching these plugins, I need to search on GitHub and the other option, of course, is very much dependent on how often you use them. I think I should really add the YouTube one because I usually make like a journal entry and then I can search for the video and then embed it and do the whole 
YouTube spiel inside LogSeq. Now another great feature is the sorting. So how does that work? I made like a quick a random name generated list and I can use slash and I say sort and then you get sort blocks and reverse sort blocks. Well, reverse does exactly what you expect that sorts it from Z to A and we're gonna use A to Z. And as you can see, pressing enter, it moves the things around and then it's nicely sorted. Uh, I think it's super useful when I'm, for example, writing down action points during a meeting where I wanna, at the end, like I prepend them with the name of the person taking the action and then I can sort and then you have a list where the name of the people are grouped so they can find their own action items quicker. But there's of course a thousand different places where you might need your blocks sorted after the fact. And then we get to one of the most powerful functions in this whole plugin setup, and that is the mark function. So what does mark do? And it is basically bookmarks an exact location inside LogSeq on a number. So you can take any number. Uh, usually you just take like one to nine, but you can take one till unlimited. So if you want to type in 4,563 and then use that as a mark, that's fine, but you will have to remember because there's no real indication on what's where, except for the mark overview. I'll show that in a bit. How does that look in practice? Now the one I've already shown you was um, taking this and then going towards my quick page. So nine, that one. Now you don't need to specify a number. I can just go here and say like, hey, template meeting and I do M and I will always save it to one. So if you do one M or M doesn't matter, it marks this location. And that point I can go through my log seek, visit something else. And at some point go like, Hey, I want to go back when I'm not in edit mode. I press single quote and it goes back exactly to the block that I was. So that's super useful. If you're working on something and you just quickly want to save your spot and come back to it later. Okay. So when I go to a page and I have nothing selected, I can save the page. So let's put that one on two. So I type two. M and it says mark to saved. Then I had my demo page that I was just showing. So let's go there. So now I got two pages saved and I'm also going to go here, escape it and save that under four. And now we got four marking safe. You can see those if you go to what is called command mode. Technically this is already command mode, but what I call command mode is when I'm typing in commands. So, uh, or a column in this case. And then you get this set up and I can type in marks. And if I do that on the side, I see all the marks that I made. So you see one is the reminder that I put with the unique ID behind it. And then two, three are both pages. So they are blue and then green, you get like another setup here. Uh, but that's then not a page, but a specific block inside the page. So the page names are your hint on what's what and you can click on it to go straight to them though of course typing it in is faster we're making a keyboard video after all now when loading these marks you can also use the control quote symbol so when i do this and i go towards control symbol then i will load that page and or block into your side pane so it's also very useful if you have things that you want to load into the side plane or quickly get available i don't use it very often because usually when i'm trying to collect notes i just use the mouse and i go through my notes and shift click to collect them and then i go back to being a keyboard warrior it's one of those few instances where i prefer using the mouse when i have to do a lot of block selection and i just want to be able to i don't know think while moving the mouse around now let's talk about the background color option so how that works is you can pick a line, like in this case, LogSeq. I can go to that command mode by doing column and I can say BG and then give it a color. Let's pick red in this case or take this element and then say, I want to get it purple. Um, let's see, so it makes it purple. Uh, another sweet element is if you have like a lot and you wanna give them like a random color to be able to easily identify each individual one, you can say BG and then pick random and then it will give each element a random color so you can differentiate between them. I mostly use it for highlights when I need a lot of different highlights and the random I don't use because that type of coloring that works weird with my brain. 
Last but not least, you have the find replace. Now, how does that work? I again go to the command mode by doing colon. I say S and I say like, I wanna remove sub and I make blank. So the slashes are the separator here and this will remove sub from the equation. Now this is fully regex supported if you are familiar with it. If not, it might be a real pain, but it allows you to make sub, sub selections on things you wanna remove. So say for example, um, I wanna remove all these scenes, the ones that have like A, B, and then one C, and I wanna find them all. So I'm doing this again, but I'm doing a procent, which means I wanna go through the whole file, and I say, find me anything that starts with A or B, has a one, um, and is then either B or C, and say like, uh, look, and if I do that, then you see that some things match up and others don't because I made like a specific sub selection. And this is super powerful, obviously. Uh, regular expressions, find replace is definitely a power move and learning regular expressions is way out of scope for this video. If you've ever dove into regular expression, that's like the voodoo of the internet. Now, one of the things that I'm missing is better sidebar integration. Most of this is focused on like the main field that you're typing in, but I also think that's something that Logseek itself needs to fix. It should be easy to switch between the main pane and the side pane and then go up and down in the blocks you have there. That would definitely make my mouse usage go down by at least 80%. So if you made it this far, remember in the description down below, there are a couple of links. First of all, the cheat sheet, so you can access that one. There's a link to sign up to my newsletter, which contains things that I found that aren't worth a whole video, but I collect throughout the month. So be sure to sign up for that one. And last but not least, there is a link to the buy me a coffee from Richard Yu who made this plugin. Be sure to go there and if you have five bucks to spare, send him a coffee, tell him tools on tech sent you and that we just all wanna thank him for writing this excellent set of plugins that we can use every day to make us more productive. Now remember, you're awesome, keep it up.